is the Rhineland city of Cologne, spring 1930. Brisk commerce from France and Belgium and Holland, from the rich Rhineland cities, was flowing through its mammoth station and past it on the river. Cologne was the thriving gateway to Germany, a busy, useful city of three quarters of a million Germans just beginning to recover from their first world war. That was 15 years ago, a couple of years before this sweating Caesar was voted into power with his high promises, some of which history proved bitterly true. For as spring came to the Rhine in 1945, this was Cologne under Hitler. There was no city anymore. History had run over it with the weight of the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. First Army and left this hollow collection of rubble and stone as testament. Germany had brought this to herself. This is defeat in modern war. The sound of ruin is silence. The smell of ruin is sick with the scent of dead and dust. And it is no longer a city. Like a hundred other ruined German cities, its sidewalks and streets are stone piles. Car tracks and street lamps and buses are twisted and grotesque. The homes and the people in the homes are gone. There are no theaters or restaurants or banks or stores. No light, no sewers, no water, no phone, no city as we know a city. There is only destruction by war. But this is a story of the rebuilding of that city from its rubble. These are the men who came to do it, soldiers of MG, G5, the American military government to whom has fallen the battle of the peace. And as the stars and stripes go up, this is the first beginning of that vast occupation army which is clearing up the rubble of a nation today. The men whose dirty, thankless job it is to build a city out of chaos, to do it quickly and with justice to its citizens. Colonel and lieutenant and PFC alike, they're engineers and lawyers, clerks and cops, specially trained to know this city and how it once worked. They're soldiers for the battle of the peace. Their job is tough because it's more than a physical rebuilding of a ruined place. It's here too, in the people. In weary files, the citizens who fought a war to win the world come home across American bridges. And MG must take responsibility for their life. Bum life, which needs a first class overhaul. The Germans listen respectfully, as Germans would, while an MG announcer gives them their first American orders. They look like any well-fed people in the city street. They're not, they're German. Inside, they're sick and bitter over another German war they didn't win. To a people like these, it's MG's job to show the way to a democratic kind of life. It was a double job, the city and its German people. And Germans had been infected a long, long time. DDT killed lice on the bodies of Germans all of whom M.G. had ordered to take the treatment. DDT stopped a sweeping typhus epidemic. But it was just one part of the double job. The powder couldn't reach their minds and kill out the infection of their former life. Here's a German with that infection burned into his arm. That's the blood type mark, used only for SS men. Tattooed on his skin for life, as his SS ideas are in his brain for life. He is incurable. It was to catch men like him that MG ordered each German to be stopped and asked for papers. The penalty for not reporting in for screening within 24 hours was severe. In long columns, the new arrivals waited on the streets for interviews. And it would be from them, the fat ones or the thin ones, the butcher and the brewmaster, that M.G. would have to choose the men who would rebuild and run their ruined city. Confirmed and dangerous Nazis mixed in the crowd. They had to. Side by side with them stood anti-Nazis coming home from exile. And as the M.G. questionnaires were filled out, the questions asked and answered, 
it became apparent that some of the most vicious of them had once been key men in the city. Some of the best were inexperienced. It would be the skill and honesty of M.G. in weeding out the bad right here, which would determine whether Germany would ever go to war again or not. The responsibility was heavy. What Nazi organizations did you join, mein Herr? What's been your source of income, mein Frau? Did you fight the Nazis? If so, how? The job was tough and the Germans cynical. But very slowly, in the swelling files, trustworthy records began to show up. And from them, M.G. selected its first police force. Here, an M.G. interpreter explains its basic functions. Policing the broken streets from looting, from sabotage. And M.G.'s first emblems of trust went out to Germans of Cologne. Armbands for the vanguard of the Germans who would work our way against the Nazi infection. There were others, many others. This distinguished looking German had been head of the Prussian Senate, famous as a city planner and as a foe of fascism. Yes, there were decent Germans to help MG, Germans to guide other Germans to democratic life. It was the beginning of the peace. <laughs> In came the new. The end of lies, the beginning of truth. The end of tyranny, the beginnings of a new chance. These were MG's terms of conquest. The rules were tough. They had to be, for well, the job was tough. And then the job began. There was still no city of Cologne. The hollow buildings menaced Germans and Americans alike. MG's newly restaffed fire department helped as down they came one by one until the ruin of the city was complete. And building could begin again, stone by stone. It was a dirty job those first months of cleaning up. So MG gave the dirty work to Germans used to dirty work, the Nazis. For the Nazis, whether banker, lawyer, government official, or party gangster, could not be trusted with any other type of work. So this was their job. No matter how much they whined, they couldn't do it. It was MG's double overhaul, the city and the people. MG made it clear to Nazi gripers that if they didn't work, they didn't eat. For one of the most crucial problems of the wrecked city was food. Already 150,000 Germans had come back and what food came in wasn't enough to feed 30,000. MG's job was not to feed them. It was merely to make sure it was distributed and kept from the black markets. MG told the Germans, feed yourself. And Germans did. They had to. Young Germans and old ones, girls and their grandmothers went to work in the fields outside the city. The era of starving other nations to feed Germany was gone. The era of using Polish, Russian, Serbian, and French men and women as slaves in the fields was gone. Some of the former slaves weren't gone. And the MG ration system obliged Germans to feed the displaced persons free. It used the same points the Germans had used in Nazi times. But instead of feeding Nazis first, it fed them last. Instead of feeding anti-Nazis last or not at all, it fed them first. <laughs> 